So how did I know what notes to play? And honestly, this is a huge question that bothered me for a long time. And I think it's a good question to ask. What do we play when we have a chord or even a few chords? And what, what scales can we play? What notes would sound good? And how do we know actually <laughs> what to play? Well, if this is what you want to know, you are in the right place. For many years for me, I remember like just, you know, starting to play guitar and, you know, there's this chord and I didn't understand why would something work on this chord and, and what would work and why something else wouldn't work and how does it all make sense. So today we're going to break it down in a very clear way into eight levels of exploration where we try to understand really clearly what to play on a chord, what framework we can use and how do we do that. Let's do it. One. <laughs> One. What does it mean to play on a chord? And I think that's, that's a valid question, although it sounds like kind of like philosophical, I think the point is when you have a chord, for example, C major chord, it means that we can play something, a framework, a scale, a grouping of notes that we can call in a name that would sound quote unquote correct. Now, again, some of these notes are gonna sound better in different contexts and some not as strong, but they're all valid. And I think this is kind of ground zero, right? Like basically saying like, I have a chord and I can play a scale that articulates this chord and vice versa. The, basically our, our goal here is to understand what to play on a chord. So when I see C minor seven, I can play a few things that are gonna sound good. Could be the pentatonic, could be different things, but the point is like we have options and we know what we can do. Two, before I'm giving you the answers, and again, there are many answers. Oh, I have a question. So I'm really curious, who's your favorite person, hero, musician, artist that you would wanna meet in person, if you could? Again, dead or alive. I, I leave the option open. I'm really curious and uh, please drop a comment. I'm gonna read and if I don't know the person, I'll look them up and learn some stuff. I think we need to explore. So what I like to do right now, and you can pick up the guitar and do it with me. I'm gonna play a C here, just a C chord. And I'm gonna take one string, I'm gonna take the B string and I'm gonna play random notes. And I'm gonna listen carefully. Okay, so now I'm asking myself, how did it sound? Now there are no right or wrong answers here. I'm trying to color code this sound of C against another note, whether it's in the context of a scale or whether it's in the context of a single color. And it's very important because you would probably wanna play some cool chromatic things very soon. So in order to do that, we must connect our ears. So again, music is, art of listening and I, I do believe in that honestly and I think that the stronger we connect our ears and, and emotions and feelings to these sounds and it's just not just fingers move um, we'll be better musician that's what I'm trying to do every day like connect the things more so I hear it more all right the exercise play the C we hear the center and now we're gonna choose a random note It's harsh, but it's also beautiful. Listen. Fa dièse, F sharp, right? Could sound like right in that context. Got a little blues in that bluesy sound. F sharp has a lot of place. And I don't know. If 
you like this kind of content um, and would like to help me create more of this, the probably the best way to do it is by supporting on the Patreon. Um, there's a lot of PDF and a lot of information there. So again, thank you. So this point of, of exploration is indeed very important. You take a note randomly on the string of B, you play it against the center and you try to see how it sounds and you try to tag the color. So you tell yourself, oh, I'm playing B flat against the C. Oof, creates a B7, a C7 actually, right? With the B flat. Very harsh, but beautiful. So the point is filling the colors. Three, all right. So here what we're gonna do, and I know you guys wanna hear what scale goes with what, and I, I'm i gonna show you all I know, but I think if you truly wanna play and solo and explore this, do not skip these important steps. So now we're gonna listen to the center, and we're gonna sing a note. So we can start simple. No, let me check, okay. Me. Listen how beautiful this third sounds against this C. Me. Right? Me. Okay, what about... Fa dies. Right, F sharp? So, in this point here, we are still trying to learn the sound colors. So we've got to sing it and make sure we're able to choose any one of these colors on the fingerboard. Again, just take the B string, one octave, and try to sing the note, and then check yourself. And if you're not sure, or you made a mistake, it's totally fine. It just means that the color is not yet clear, then you need to practice it. Just do it a couple minutes a day, and you'll get it, I promise. Four, all right, T. Definitely like T. If you made it here, you probably definitely like guitar. So what we're gonna do now is basically taking the main three colors, major, minor, and dominant. We'll take C major seven. You can also take just C major, it's totally fine. I'm gonna take C major seven, cause I like it. And we're gonna ask the question, what scale is gonna work on this chord? And there are a few immediate, very clear answers. But let's listen. This is C. And I can play C major scale. And I want you guys to listen to the colors again. It's, it's a scale, but it's also a melody. And it's also a lot of colors, right? It's not one thing. Again, the C major scale functions well on top of the C major chord. And it's a very true statement. And I think it's important to understand um, that we have more options, and we'll talk about it in a second, but also that the C major seven or the C chord is within the framework of that scale. And I know it sounds like simple and basic, but it's not. All right, so we can hear that, and that's awesome and, and kind of obvious, right? That's the clearest one. What else can we play? And the, the answer that will come kind of soon is um, basically adding the flat five. So it's when I have a C major chord, I will play C major scale with a flat five, which we can call a mode, we can call it Lydian. It's all good. For me right now, I just want to think about it in terms of color. I want to think about the fingering and, the, and how I can quickly utilize it. So I see a C major and I can bring my finger for the G major scale and understand the relationship to that C. Now this video again is not about modes. I'm not gonna explore modes here, but I am gonna expand and understand why when we have a C7, we'll play a certain scale and how does the target point affects what we play. All right, so to summarize C, I see two main options. I see two main options. C major, which I do not take lightly, and then G major, or again, C Lydian. These are the two kind of like immediate suspects, which gives us a lot of beautiful colors to play against a C major seven chord. I'm getting the flat five, I'm adding the Lydian there, or I'm just getting the beautiful notes within the framework of C 
against that. Okay, things are gonna get a little more interesting, a little more complex once we talk about C7. Level five. All right, so this is maybe kind of the meat of this video and there are a lot of questions of what do you play on a dominant chord? And there are a few answers. Um, so the question that we need to ask ourselves is where are we going? You have a C7 chord. Can you play Mixolydian, which means basically one, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven, one, a hundred percent. Is it gonna sound good? It sounds good. But what happens if we're actually going to F minor? So I could play these colors articulating, you know, that A natural on the C7 is still gonna be okay, but it's not completely describing where we're going. But what happens if we're playing C7 that's supposed to go to F minor, but it's going to F7. All right, so there are a few options that are very good questions and we have a few solutions. And let's do it, let's go over it. The kind of basic option, or I don't wanna say basic, but just the, the kind of like clear one, I have it the chord C7. First, I don't care where I'm going. I hear the chord and I just play the notes of the scale C7, which is basically, again, mixolydian, or if you want to think about it in other words, C7 leads us to F major, therefore I'm playing the fifth degree of F, therefore I'm literally playing F major scale from C, which gives us the mixolydian. It's all the same thing from different angles. We hear the colors and relationships. So when I have the C7, I just play the scale. For me, this is kind of cool, but I do like understanding where I'm going. And when I'm improvising, I try to look ahead, just knowing where I'm going. If there is a curve, am I going to F minor, F major, F sharp? So there is a meaningful um, kind of outlook, I think, <laughs> in understanding where we're going. And it it's actually makes everything a little easier and more relaxing when you're sewing because you're not always caught up in this like, oh, I'm playing C7, oh my God, I'm playing F minor, what's, you know, oh, B flat. No, no, you're playing C7 that is going to F major. That's pretty relaxing. You already know a bar or two. And I try oftentimes to think a little ahead in a few bars so I know and I can imagine where we're going. And that imagination helps me be a little more chill. All right, so you have C7 to F major, we can play the mixolydian, great. But what happens when the C7 is going to F minor? So is this trouble? No, but is this more complicated? Just a little bit, not really. So when we have the C7 going to F minor, we have two main options. We can either play harmonic minor, or melodic minor. And this is the point that I think a lot of people that play guitar are kind of like, oh my God, that's a lot, that's, you lost me. Wait, I didn't lose you just yet, so check it out. So we have the C7. We are basically gonna play the scale that we're headed to. We're going to F minor. So I can play F minor. F, I'm gonna play F uh, melodic minor which means one, two, three, four, five, six, natural six, natural seven, and one. Now, if I have the chord C7 and I'm playing that, so it's articulating the chord in a really clear way because I'm getting the one, two, three, four, five, flat six, right? and seven. So if I'm playing this chord, it's actually articulating a lot of the good stuff. C, one, two, three, four, five, flat six, flat seven. I am getting the natural nine, which is really cool, but sometimes you want that crunchy flat nine. When? Well, it's a matter of taste. It's a matter of where, what you're feeling. Do I feel this? 
or do I feel right they're both great but they're just a different color it's like do you like avocado or cucumber the worst examples ever but you know they're both fine green vegetables but yeah depends when what we can do here is play the harmonic minor so this is the framework for C7 flat 9 basically I'm playing F minor harmonic minor 1 2 3 4 5 flat 6 major 7 1 so you can see this here if you need a PDF you can check it here and when I'm listening to this sound again C7 no getting all these beautiful colors. So the thing is, again, when we have a dominant seven, we need to ask ourselves, are we going to F major? Maybe then I'm using a mixolydian. Are we going to F minor? And then I have two options, harmonic or melodic. And then each one of them gives us a little different set of colors, but we need to think about it as colors because they're all just colors, which goes back to the first exercise I was kind of trying to have us do, where we listen to the center and we say, it's all fair game, it's all just colors. I can play anything. Right, so that kind of notion that it's all possible and it's just colors is really, really helpful. Six, minor chord. So when we have a minor chord, for example, C minor, I think about it as five main options to kind of withdraw colors from. The first one would be potentially the good old pentatonic. Beautiful, very effective color. One, flat three, four, five, flat seven, one. And I think a lot of you do that, which is awesome. There's no problem with that. But of course, there is more. So what can we do? We can start by playing the natural minor. What is that? One, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven. Sounds like this. Right, and I'm not thinking about it as modes, I'm thinking about it as colors. I'm asking myself, I have this chord C minor, I want to play it, I want to solo what color am I hearing? So, of course, right now I'm doing this in only one position, but in reality, I'll practice C natural minor all across the guitar. I'll practice C pentatonic all across the guitar, and I'll practice the other options as well. So, what are some more options? Another option is the same as we talked before with the dominant. We can play the melodic minor, which sounds beautiful. Melodic minor gives us the major seven, which is just so lush. And the six. So for me, again, when I have the chord C minor, I'm not saying like, oh, I have to play a pentatonic, or oh, I have to play natural minor. They're all interchangeable. I can play natural minor and then play the major seven, and then play the pentatonic. They're all valid, they're just colors. That's why I think I really wanted to talk about it, so you feel comfortable exploring the colorness of the color. So it's not just a box of I'm playing, you know, C natural minor, or it's not a box of I'm playing melodic minor, or of course harmonic minor, which are all beautiful colors. But it's not this or that. It's not really that kind of black and white. It's more optional things. And the last color that I want to talk about here with the C minor is the Phrygian. And again, you can think about it as mode, but you can just imagine the color. 
I get that flat nine. You know, you can say, oh, I'm playing a C minor chord, and you're playing, you know, D flat is like the harshest note. But again, if you think about this color, then it's not harsh, it's just a beautiful sound. Seven. So we're talking about the, the framework. We're saying, okay, I have a C major chord or C major seven chord, and what are the scales, right? Or C minor. But I think it's very important to know the triad, to know the one, three, five that is behind the chord that we're dealing with. So if I'm playing a C7, I would like to really be clear to myself with the fingerings and framework of the one, three, five, of the triad, because the scale is kind of like extensions and, and more colors around the meat and the center of this chord, which is the one, three, five, the triad. So if you're playing a C major seven chord, I really need to hear and know the notes. The, do mi sol that one three five literally we can sing the C minor do mi sol do no. just sing the framework the triads and how they respond and correlate with the framework eight scales as colors so this is kind of the last point which for me is how I'm trying to kind of articulate and understand what I'm doing. So I'm using frameworks, right? So I have the chord C major. I'm still seeing C major as a part of C major scale. Again, if it's C major seven and we're in the key of C, but I'm also seeing the chord tones of this beautiful sound. And I'm also seeing the scale as extensions. Right, so, and I'm also trying to be flexible with the idea that on C major seven, I can use those chromatic things, so everything is possible. So this is kind of like taking the chord, understanding the framework, okay, C major scale, knowing the core triad or seven chord, and then seeing and hearing all the notes and the connecting chromatic notes, again, chroma, color, the colorful notes, seeing the colors and how they relate. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this was helpful and interesting as always. Um, I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.